I've never spoken about my backup system on this channel before, and that's mainly because it has been embarrassingly bad until now, because I've made quite a big upgrade. There are loads of benefits to being a tech YouTuber, as you might suspect, but one of the biggest is being sent really cool stuff. And recently I was sent one of the coolest things I think I've ever been sent, which was this, a full on NAS from Synology. They even came to this studio to install it for me. Now this video isn't sponsored by Synology, but their incredible generosity has finally, finally given me the excuse I needed and the push that I needed to create a proper future-proof robust backup system. Today I'm going to show you that backup system and who knows it might give you some ideas about how to build a backup system of your own. NAS stands for Network Attached Storage and it is basically a bit like having your own personal Dropbox or iCloud Drive. There is a bit more to it than that, as you might suspect, but a NAS is basically a device like this, which you plug into your broadband router and which you can then put drives into and use as external storage. They're used by businesses and home users to store data centrally for ease of access by multiple people on different devices. Some people also use them for streaming content such as video and audio. Others just use these things as massive storage areas for their photo collection and even as a way to control their home surveillance system. Now the DS1522 Plus, very catchy name, is one of the latest NAS devices to hit the market and it's really rather special. The DS1522 Plus will set you back somewhere between £700 to £800 pounds in the UK without drives. It's powered by an AMD Ryzen R1600 chip, 8GB of system memory which can be upgraded to 32, 5 drive bays for those hard drives, 2 slots for SSD cache which I'll come on to in a minute, 4 LAN ports and optional 10 gigabit networking. Now these 5 drive bays that you can see on the front can actually be increased to 15 with the addition of 2 expansion units. And going back to that SSD cache, that's quite a cool feature, it does cost a bit more obviously, but by putting 2 SSD chips into this thing, you can make the transfer of data to the NAS far more efficient and a little bit quicker because it uses the SSD to kind of store the stuff temporarily on that chip and then transfer it later or when it's most convenient to the drives. That's a terrible explanation. It's probably not factually correct, but it does speed up the transfer speeds. And this NAS is controlled by a brilliant built-in operating system, but you can also control it from your phone and it's compatible fully with macOS and Windows if you want to set it up as an external drive. And accessing this thing remotely could not be easier. Synology sets you up with what they call a quick connect URL, which you just plug into any web browser and you can then securely log into your NAS wherever you are. There's an awful lot more to this NAS than that, but I'm not a particularly techy tech channel. You should know that by now. So I'm not going to go into every single detail about this thing. What I am going to do is tell you how I'm using it and the key features I think you might be interested in. So my NAS has two drives at the moment. They're both located here and this is how easy it is to take them out and put them back in. I can just lift that flap up and pull it out and there's the drive. That's one of them. So I've got two of these basically, one here, one in here. They're both 14 terabytes and they give me 14 terabytes in total because they're actually mirrored. And they do this via something called Synology Hybrid RAID, which means basically if one of these drives fails, the other one will seamlessly become my working drive. And I can then basically take the broken one out, replace it, plug it back in, and it just picks up where it left off. And in terms of how I'm using this NAS, it performs two functions for this business. The first is basically a place on which to store my most important files. As you'd guess for a business like this, that is largely video files, brand assets, blog images and Final Cut Pro libraries that I want to keep. Now I'm slowly adopting a application called Hazel that makes all of this stuff sync across from my MacBook to the NAS automatically, but that's for another video. I also place B-roll on here that I might want to reuse from past videos and also all the videos that I've published on this channel go onto this NAS for safekeeping. That's made a massive difference to my production process because previously I'd get those things off external drives, external SSD drives, which I'd have to remember to have with me all the time. With this, I don't need to do that. If I need a past video or a piece of B-roll, no matter where I am, if I'm in here or if I'm at home, I can log onto the NAS, grab that footage, copy it across to my MacBook Pro and start working on it. It is absolutely game-changing. 
The second function for this in this business is as a time machine backup. That's right, if you're a Mac user, you can use a Synology NAS as a time machine drive, in addition to using the rest of the drives in here for storage purposes. It's really simple, you just create a shared folder called time machine, and there's a few tick boxes you need to check in the operating system for this. And as soon as you've done that, you can then access that shared folder from your Mac as a time machine drive. It's so, so easy but I've gone even further than that. Synology also offers something called C2, which is their automated cloud backup service. Now my C2 account is attached to this NAS, which means that is automatically backing up everything on here to the cloud. However, I've gone even further than that. I also have a 14 terabyte external drive attached to the NAS, and that uses Synology's hyper backup tool to automatically back up everything on this drive or on these drives to that external drive. I hope this is all making sense. Basically, this mirrors two drives. So if one drive dies, I've got the other one there. It's no problem at all. I have a C2 backup account, which is taking all the data on this and throwing it into the cloud securely. And I also have an external drive attached to this to create another physical backup on site of all of the data on this NAS. And the reason for that last one, it's a bit overkill, but the reason for that last one is that if both of these drives fail, so if something goes horribly wrong with this and they both die, I still have both that C2 backup off site, but also that physical backup in my possession right next to this machine. And I can also take that physical backup away with me whenever I need to. So for example, we're going on a family holiday quite soon. It will just give me a bit more peace of mind that I can take that drive with me because if someone breaks into this place or I don't know, something terrible happens here and this disappears or dies, I've got all of the stuff that I hold dear on that other external drive. Oh, and there's one other thing. Synology also provides an iPhone app, which is called Mobile Photos or Photos Mobile, I think. And that basically takes all of your photos from your iPhone and automatically backs them up to your NAS. So all of my photos are safe too, because obviously they're getting backed up to C2 and to that external drive as well. It's an epic backup system, and it is a bit overkill, to be honest. I've kind of gone from one extreme to the other. You know, I, I didn't really have a proper backup system before, believe it or not. Now I have this absolute fortress. Now at this point, you might be thinking that I've gone way overboard and this is way beyond what you need to do yourself. And that's probably the case, to be fair. But this does reveal how far you can go with this stuff. And more importantly, I hope it will give you an idea of what you can do with your own backup system. So for instance, I have another time machine backup. Sorry, yeah, I've got, I forgot about that. I've got two time machine backups. The second one is actually linked to my Synology router, which has a kind of NAS feature built into it. That's a far cheaper way of gaining NAS-like functionality compared to buying one of these things. And as I say, I have a drive attached to that router. I made a video about this, which I'll link to above, but that drive attached to that router is also acting as a time machine backup. So I do actually have two time machine backups, but that doesn't matter. Basically, if you don't want to spend all the money on this, then there are other ways of getting NAS-like functionality from routers. My advice, as always, is to set a budget, check out the full range of NAS devices offered by companies like Synology, and start small. And that's the best thing about a NAS. You can build it out and increase the storage and the stuff that it can do as your own needs increase. But if you do have the budget for something like the DS1522+, Plus, I do have some thoughts. So the DS1522 Plus is, like I mentioned, an absolute beast of a NAS, and it's probably overkill for what I need. Now there is a wealth of options for the DS1522 Plus. It's incredible, honestly, the amount of things you can do with this is pretty mind-blowing. And while most of it isn't much use to me, I do think small businesses that have specific needs for a NAS, and just people who like tinkering with this stuff at home, would love putting this thing through its paces. Now, in terms of the device itself, it's very, very well built. It's built like a tank, to be honest, which is very reassuring when you bear in mind that it's kind of storing all of your important data. Synology is known for this stuff. They've been doing this for many, many years, and it kind of shines through, really. It's very functional, very utilitarian. But what I love about it is as soon as you put that on your desk, it looks like it and you mean business. 
Now, in terms of the setup, like I mentioned at the start of this video, I was very lucky for these guys to come out and install this NAS for me, but you can do it yourself. You don't have to get them to do it for you at all. It's completely self-installable, and I would have done that if they hadn't offered to. The only thing I would say about the DS1522+, Plus, or more specifically the drives inside it, is that it is quite loud. And that's because it uses spinning drives, physical hard drives. And when they're being written to and accessed, they just make quite a racket, which in a server room, in a, an office where it's noisy anyway, probably isn't an issue. In here, it is. So that's just something to bear in mind if you have, like me, a quiet environment that you want to remain quiet. Now, this wasn't a really in-depth review of this NAS. It was never going to be. This isn't what this channel's all about. But hopefully, it gave you a bit of an insight into what this new backup system is doing for me how I'm using it, and also how I'm using this NAS to pretty much revolutionize the way that I produce content. Honestly, the fact that I can just grab stuff from this whenever I need to is game changing. And because of that, I probably will talk more about this thing in upcoming videos. And with that in mind, I'd love to know what you want to know about a NAS in general or about the actual Synology DS1522+. Plus. If you want to know something specific about this device, how I use it or about my backup routine, let me know in the comments. And if you'd like to see more of what goes on behind the scenes at this channel, keep watching for a link to my full studio tour.